Hi guys, so let's talk about another quant interview problem today. So the question is that you have to design and implement a version queue data structure. A version queue maintains a version number along with normal queue functionality. So like the normal queue functionalities are NQ and DQ, DQ. So every operation that is every NQ and DQ on the queue is going to increment its version. And you have to implement the following functionalities. NQ will append an element at the end of the queue. DQ will return the element from the front of the queue. And there is a print API which we have to implement. It basically takes a version number as input and prints the elements of the queue of the given version. And the version number input can also be an old historical version. Example, if the current version number of the queue is 7 and the input to this function is 5, then it should print the elements of the queue when its version number was 5. Okay, in case you didn't understand the question, you can pause the video here and read it again. But um, let me also explain you what it is trying to say. So the question is simple. I mean, you have to just implement a queue data structure if uh, you are familiar with programming. So you might already be knowing that a uh, queue data structure is basically it's a FIFO data structure and which means that first in first out. So what is the meaning of first in first out that the anything which is added into the queue is always added at the end of the queue and anything which is removed from the queue is always removed from the front of the queue. So that is what a FIFO data structure means. So we have to implement NQ functionality, the DQ functionality. I mean NQ will uh, append an element at the end of the queue. DQ will remove an element from the front of the queue and then there is a print functionality which will take a version number and print the elements of that particular version and like these will take the element to be added the nq and dq so the only constraint in this question is that you uh, i mean these all these functionalities should be as efficient as possible and you are not supposed to use any of the c plus plus standard template library data structures okay you should do everything on your own so if you talk about a normal queue, I mean, forget about this version queue for a moment. So in what do we do in a normal queue? I mean, you, you, we usually have a head and a tail. The head denotes the, uh, you can say the beginning of the queue and tail denotes the end of the queue. So uh, initially both of these are null and whenever we add elements to the queue, I mean, these keep on incrementing. Let's say we NQ1 to this particular queue. Okay, so now our head will point to one and our tail will also point to one okay and like our queue will look something like this our queue will basically look like there is one and then after this there is nothing there is it points to null the next of the one now let's say we nq2 to this particular queue so our head will still remain one i mean all the nq nq is done at the end of the queue so our, but our tail will become two okay so our queue would look something like this that it is one and then it is two and two's next is basically null so i mean similarly whenever you keep on incrementing everything will keep appending to the queue the tail will always be modified when you dq something let's say you did a dq from this queue so the dq will you do not pass any argument to the dq because i mean the front of the queue is going to be dq'd always so in this case our head will be incremented it will become two tail is also two and the dq will basically return one because one was at the front of the queue we dq'd it and it returned one and now our updated queue looks something like this okay so but for a version queue there are some peculiarities so what are those peculiarities basically that uh, i mean every time you are doing i mean initially your version of the queue will be zero okay or you can also start with one and every time you are doing an nq or dq your you will keep on incrementing the version okay so let's say here when we were here our version of the queue was zero but then we did an nq here so now our version of the queue is one okay and this is how the version one queue looks like this is the version one queue then we did another nq now our version has become two because every nq dq operation is going to increment the version right so our version now has become two here and our version two queue looks like something like this and when we did a dq then our version has again incremented and now our version is three and the version three queue looks like this so let's say if someone asks you that print the version two queue okay print version 2q so you basically have to print this this is the version 2q 
you should print one two okay i mean the current state of the queue looks like this but the version 2 queue looks like this right so you need some uh you can say some kind of storage functionality to make sure that you store all the version queues i mean whatever are the historical versions so how we can do that so as i as we saw i mean we are going to take the advantage of this head and tail only so in a normal queue there was only one head and tail but to implement this version queue we will have a head and tail pointer for each version i mean there will be a head and tail pointer for the current state of the queue and there will be a head and tail pointer for each version of the queue so that whenever someone asks us to print the queue of that particular version we can take the head of that version we can start iterating from there until we have reached till the end of the queue that is not the end of the queue but the tail of that particular version okay and to support this we need to make sure that we do not pop any elements from the queue i mean we during deletion or during dq we won't be deleting the elements from the queue because let's say for this particular uh for this particular state when we were asked to dq an element so if we would have actually deleted this one from the queue then if then when later someone asked us to print the version 2 queue we won't know i mean we won't have this one and we won't be able to print it right so whenever you are doing going to dq we won't actually delete the element from the queue only the only thing which we will do is that we will actually increment the current head of the queue the elements will still remain in the queue we are only going to manipulate the pointers the head and tail pointers okay so this is how we are going to implement it so let me show you the code which is going to make it even more clear so let's jump into it so uh, here is a main function which i have written so basically this is our queue and here we are going to enqueue one i have enqueued one then i have enqueued two then i have enqueued three i mean here our version the version queue was zero i mean the version of the queue was zero then after this enqueue the version will be one after this enqueue the version will be two then this enqueue the version would be three then we are going to dq three elements our version will keep on incremented here our version will be four then here will it will be five then six and at the end i again dq from the queue okay so this is going to be seven and so whenever i think whenever someone asks us to print that what is the the version queue of that particular state we are going to print the elements which were there when when the version of the queue was that particular number okay so here actually i am printing all the version queues i mean our version has gone from 0 till 7 so i am printing all the 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 version queues so let's see how we have i have implemented it so this is our node data structure which will basically contain the data and the next i mean each queue will be you can imagine your queue as a linked list of these nodes okay so each node will store the data that is what is the number present in it and the pointer to its next element now we need a generalized you can say yeah a generalized queue which can store elements of any type that's why this node data structure is templated okay so this node data structure will be stored in the queue i mean as i told you that our queue is implemented as a linked list of nodes then there is this version data structure okay again this is templated because we want to be able to store any type of elements in the queue so as i told you that each there in normal queue there is only one head and tail but in a, this version queue there will be a head and tail for each particular version so that is what this version data structure is going to store it is going to store the head and tail of a particular version okay and this is our actual queue which is again templated because as i said any type of element should be stored so let's see the nq function so this is an nq function whenever someone gives us an element we have to nq it into the queue so these are actually our current head and current tail the current head of the queue and the current tail of the queue and then i have a vector of those versions because why i have used a vector here or an array here because you can imagine that our version is starting from zero and it is continuously incrementing by one so we can easily simulate that by storing it in a vector because vector indices also start from zero and it will keep on incremented one two three so whenever i have to access the queue of a particular version all i need to do is go to that particular index in this vector right and at that particular index i have this version data structure i'll see that what are the head and tail of those version and i will print the elements 
which ever are there from those head and tail basically i will iterate from head to tail and print all the elements so that's what this vector is doing this is not an std vector the vector provided by c++ stl i have implemented my own vector here because we were not allowed to use because we are not allowed to use any c++ stl data structures okay so let's see now the nq so i check first that if our queue is empty then we will have to instantiate uh, our head so i instantiated my head like this is the node and my tail and head my tail will also now point to my head only because i mean we have only one element right otherwise if we had more than one element in the queue then basically if our queue was not empty then we instantiate the node we as we are we always enqueue at the end of the queue so our current tails next will become this node and our current tail will be updated to become this node which have been inserted right now right and now i have to as i told you that each uh, whenever we do an nq or dq our version is incremented so i need to store what are the for this particular version what are my updated head and tail so i am just pushing uh, the head and tail in my basically i am putting pushing the version in my this version's data because as i told you that we are using vector and when, whenever we are going to do a push back or an m place back it will be inserted at the end of the vector and the index will be automatically incremented right so that's what this m place back is doing so we have stored our version in this particular vector and here is how the dq looks like if our queue is empty i mean we need to do all sort of error handling as well if our queue is empty then we just throw an exception if it is not empty uh, i store the basically the data present at the head at the head node in this element variable i increment my head node to become the next i mean what would be our updated head the element which is next to our current head and now i again store the updated uh, you can say head and node head and tail in my version data structure in this version list okay so this is now my updated head and tail for this particular version and i eventually return the element which was dequeued this is our print function it takes a version and first we check if the version is outside the range because maybe let's say uh, when your version is zero it is anyways the queue is empty if let's say uh, you only did i mean your current version is only let's say 10 but someone is asking you to print the version q 100 i mean but what is the state of the queue when the version was 100 so obviously i mean your maximum version is 10 only so we need to do those error handling as well, as well that if anyone passes a version argument which is outside the current range of the version so this check is taking care of that then i am just printing that this is the queue version and now we will print the uh you can say all the elements for that particular version in the queue so i fetch the head and tail of this given version so i'm fetching that from our array versions array okay and since everything is zeroed index so i that's why i'm doing version minus 1 because in array everything is zeroed index this is my head and this is my tail for that particular version i start iterating from head till tail and i print all the elements in the queue okay between that head and tail so as i told you like during dq i am not actually removing any element from the queue right i am just manipulating the current head and tail pointer so that makes sure that everything if given any head or tail we can print the elements present in the queue and this is just an this is how i have implemented my empty function that if our head is null ptr then obviously our queue is empty okay and as i told you that uh, i am have implemented my own vector i am not using c++ std vector so let me give you a walk through of that code as well so if you copy my code this is how you can basically compile it and run it so as you can say here that i have implemented my own vector and this vector is actually not a general purpose vector it is only supposed to store trivially destructible types again since our queue can store any type of data structure that's why our vector should also be able to store any type of data structure so that's why it is templated on this type t and this is not a general purpose vector it is only supposed to store trivially destructible types so this check is for that that this particular vector should only store trivially destructible types if someone is you know trying to store any other type of element like which a type of element which is not trivially destructible then the compilation will fail i mean he will get to know at the compile time only because we don't want our clients to make any error to store the type of elements which are not supposed to be stored in this vector as it is not a general purpose vector so this is the constructor this is the destructor where i am freeing the memory i mean uh, the main elements in the vector and this is how actually std vector is also implemented there is a capacity which 
tells you what is the capacity of the vector this there is a current size variable which tells you what is the size of the vector that is how many elements are currently stored in the vector and this is a array which actually stores the uh, all the elements present in the vector okay and basically vectors are dynamically growing array so this is how these capacity and size variables help do that so i have implemented the emplace back functionality which i was using it is taking these variadic template arguments it sees if this resize if required checks if we have already i mean if the vector is already full then we need to allocate more memory right so that this is what we are doing and in case this method returns false we are not enqueuing we are basically not pushing back the element in the vector and that is that is what uh, std vector also does and the reason it does that because maybe your vector has grown very large and now you are trying to insert more elements on uh, on it and you know memory is not available maybe your ram is already full so in that case new memory won't be allocated right so this check is to take care of that and eventually we do a placement new of the element which needs to be inserted and we increment the size and this is the square bracket operator right uh, this is required because as you saw that we were uh, accessing in the print function we were uh, accessing the elements or the head and tail stored at a particular index in this vector so here we are using the square bracket operator right so we need to implement this square bracket operator as well so this is how it is implemented it is and this is how std vector also implemented so this is these are those square bracket operators this is the front which tells you the what is the element stored at the front of the vector and this is the size method which tells you the current size of the vector this is how i am checking resize if required that if someone is trying to push back and if our size is i mean the new size would become current size plus one so if that is less than equal to the capacity of the vector then we return true that is we can insert easily insert any element if our vector is already full we allocate new capacity that would be the double of the current capacity we allocate that much memory so this is malloc is doing this allocating that new capacity memory and if when malloc fails and it can fail maybe when memory is not available it will return a null ptr so i am checking if it returned null ptr i am returning false okay and then eventually we uh, I, we have this new array i do placement new of the elements in it and now i have to basically store whatever i mean this is the new array which we have allocated now i have to first move all the elements from my current array to this new array so that's what i have done in this for loop and then i have to also delete the current vector which i had so these three things take care of that and eventually i also update my capacity which has now become this new capacity and we return true and this is how std vector is also implemented mostly so i think uh that's all i had for this particular video thank you guys for watching please do not forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time